been talking about women at all, and I'm just wondering, do you guys think that women can really have it all? Ooh. <laughs> Let me answer that. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually, I think you, I told you this before, I think you're a major feminist, and I mean, uh, being married to the woman that you are, uh, yeah, you have to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, I don't, I don't generally sit in, in I, or on any platform quite yet, because I'm still, I've, I have two young, I have a one-year-old and a five-year-old, both girls, um, so I'm vested in the subject. I, I'll tell you this, I, I don't know if you remember this, but I got pregnant with my first child two year, no, one and a half years into starting Eventbrite, and, um, and I remember calling my mom and saying, now what? <laughs> because, frankly, my generation wasn't raised to think about how you build a company and have a family at the same time. And, um, you know, I, I try not to be too much of a fangirl, but I think that what Sheryl Sandberg said about, um, which was such, was just strangely a provocative statement, but if you think about what she really meant, it actually is pretty basic. But uh, one of the most important career choices a woman can make is if she's going to have a partner and who that partner is going to be. And I, I quite literally think that that is, is so true because um, I, I am, my personal situation is very much a partnership and I don't, I certainly don't think that we could have made Eventbrite work without each other and without our village and our support and, and what we have, but you know, embrace um, that, you know, I'm an example that it's so important to model for your team and for your children and what you want the world to look like in the future and to live that, right? And so I find these parallels between, now I'm going off the reservation, but I found these parallels between <laughs> building a company and growing a human being and there's like uncanny parallels that the 22-year-old engineers that I've ever read do not want to hear about. Um, but I mean, I could go on and on and really? we could probably, um, and so, but, um, but I, you know, if I'm is, basically almost 50 50. I, I did a count for the first time I think late last year um, male female which is really exciting but I've done a count for the first time six years in because that hadn't been something that I had been particularly focusing on but I think by having you know myself and several other profound extremely amazing women in leadership positions we're modeling that for for who we're bringing in. Um, more than half of our executive team are females, so we of course like to joke about that because my team's winning. Um, but you know, it's, it's um, I think it's just all about you know modeling for people what's possible and also not making it seem like you you can have it all and it's so easy. And you know, I'm the first one to tell somebody what yeah. kind of disaster happened at home when they're like, "Gosh, how do you do it?" I'm like, "Oh, let me tell you about you know." what I was doing at 2 a.m. and and how you know how that you know it's not always efficient and amazing and perfect but I do think partnership and your village and it doesn't have to be your parents it can be the people you choose to keep around you really does help too well the only reason I would say is because there's so many policy changes that obviously need to be made in terms of just around maternity leave and just unpaid yeah. unpaid maternity and yeah. just not being able not everybody has these type of privileges well, so that, that's that's actually know. that outrage. It's, so so just a quick aside. So I created the maternity and paternity policy at Eventbrite after I had our baby, and when we when we when we uh, you know hired our first employee because that's what we had to have in the handbook. So I based it on my own knowledge and what of what I thought was important. And it wasn't until several years later that I ended up on um, an HR email list and somebody sent out a question, this is actually just last year, it's, this is really depressing, somebody sent out a question to the email list and asked, what is your maternity policy? And I couldn't believe that people don't make people, so ours is, you know, three months completely whole and then you have other options beyond that. And I'm even annoyed that you have to get, you know, a state payment and then, and then the event rate check and it doesn't like match up, right? Nobody should be stressed about money in those first few days after you come home from the hospital, right? Furthermore, men should know that they can take time off and that it doesn't have to be the first couple of weeks that the baby's born because as you know, you're not really needed. I mean, we appreciate the support and the pictures, but you're really needed like a few months in when the baby's actually opening their eyes and there's that. So at Eventbrite, we really advocate for, for everybody to take the time when they want to take the time, right? But that's not the norm and that's 
nuts. I mean, the fact that our policy is on par with Google, and that's like a very rich policy, it's just completely nuts. So now I'm fired up. <laughs> no, I, and I actually want to I'm getting in the middle of this. Really? Yeah, I've been taking it. No, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, in, well, <laughs> as I should be. I know my place in this discussion. <laughs> this topic. But my, just for what it's worth, my wife uh, did a documentary called Misrepresentation, about the misrepresentation of women in media and politics. And she's literally traveled all over the country. She's gone again as I speak, um, uh, talking to children in schools and uh, literally was in Dubai talking to governments and, and really pushing this. So when Mayor says, I, I've got a frame of reference, it's, it's a pretty intense one. Uh, but, you know, the answer to the question from my perspective, and, and I, I don't mean to be flippant, and I haven't even perhaps uh, been posed the question or answered it as succinctly as I, I'm about to with my wife, is twofold. You're right. You've got to define what all means, which I think, because it's different for everyone. But if it's about finding that balance, it ain't going to happen until men take more responsibility at home with their kids, period. Uh, and I, I really believe that. Because, you know, and, and uh, you know, this, it's just self-evident to me. I'm not even in the margin of error finding that balance with my wife uh, in terms of the time she puts in with the kids. And I think I'm doing a lot more than most of my friends with the kids. But I just don't know how it's physically and mentally possible otherwise. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm struck by the debate, uh, and I'm very passionate about it, particularly now with uh, a three-year-old daughter uh, and another uh, daughter that I'll have in July, a son in between, and just watching all these videos with my daughter, you know, watching these Disney programs and, you know, all the things my wife was preaching in terms of the body images of little Tinkerbell. Just it's not, not only doesn't obviously look human, but is an inhuman, um, you know, figure of just the skinny this and this, all the protagonists all, I mean, I mean, the whole, everything as a young child, just think of, watch what you watch with your kids. It's just set up for all, it's so biased against women, and it so categorizes women at the earliest ages is to be the victim or be the one that's sought after or seeking, rather, some affirmation from the man or the guy on the white horse. And so there is so much that we need to do to counter that, and the media plays a gigantic role in this, uh, and certainly policymakers do with family medical leave acts and things like that, paid sick leave. I was very proud as mayor, you know, we do paid sick leave, only city in the United States. Um, the city does it for these reasons, but we've got a lot of work to do on this. Um, do you think that women also, you know, have self-limiting behaviors as well? Like, I mean, I think it's a culture, it's a whole culture. Women have to change their thought process yeah, as well. I mean, I think it's, I think it's in line so what, with what Gavin just outlined, which is that we're predisposed to understand what our future holds, right? And so, again, I'll quote the great Cheryl, Cheryl Summer. Uh, she, she told that story in, in her TED Talk about, you know, a, a Facebook employee coming in and saying, you know, turning down or thinking about turning down a, a promotion. And basically she said, it's because I'm going to have a family. And she said, oh, congratulations, I know you're expecting. And the, it turns out the woman wasn't even dating someone. I mean, she was just in the future going to be expecting a family and didn't. But that, I mean, come on. Like, for example, you had that thought. I mean, I, I had that thought. Like, that's when I, 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 I had my, you know, panic call to my mom. Like, what, what do I do? How do I do this and that? Because I somehow was predisposed to think that it was all going to fall on me. And... You know, I, I don't I don't want to you know, make the man a martyr, but Kevin is a we are the the sort of picture I think of as close to 50 50 as you can get. And it's messy sometimes. And I feel like, wow, if he were to look up and look at what everybody else was doing, like, you, you know, I got to keep focus because I can't let him see what everybody else is doing. And he's doing like, why are we? But it's, it's, it's what works. It's what works for us. And it's 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 how we're modeling the, for our children, and it's so important, but it's just so, um, it's so hard to change that blueprint in people's minds, even if they consider themselves progressive and independent and fierce and feminine. It's like there's something in us that just expects some picture that doesn't help us fulfill our full potential. You know, um, it's interesting, this conversation, you reminded me, you know, and, and at, at peril, and at peril, I'm saying this. Uh, I'll tell the story, and, and then I, I won't have to have said it. Uh, the story uh, will sum it up. I appointed the first female police chief in our city's history, and then I 
a few weeks later, appointed the first female fire chief ever. I got a call from one of those well-known and powerful women in California who applauded me for the police chief move and called me back saying, what point now are you making with the fire chief? Uh, we get the point uh, you previously made. It now seems a little belittling to the other candidates. Another powerful woman condemning the choice, thinking I did it just for atmospherics, not because Joanne Hayes White was the most qualified and Chief Fong was the right person at the right time for the city. So women often hold each other back, I guess is the at peril point well, and, I and, wanted to say. And with all due respect to the powerful female um, politician, there I actually find that there's a, a little bit of a generational divide in this issue because um, while I, I respect the women who have fought the fight before us, there's, it's a different fight. You know, it's a different landscape now. And all the rules in terms of how you entrench yourself in the boys club and how you, how you then, you know, make yourself known from there and how you try to ascend the ladder without being too much of a, you know, you know what. And you, and, you know, it, it doesn't apply anymore.